I'm Annalise Kassar Tedesco, and I'm the vocal music teacher at Shalmet High School in St. Bernard Parish. My class reflects a group of students who come from very diverse backgrounds and family situations. I am passionate about creating equal opportunities for enrichment and experience within the performing arts, and about combating not only financial and social poverty, but emotional poverty as well. I encourage them to value their performing art experience and to pursue achievement on a pre-professional level. But furthermore, I position them to see how their performing arts training can connect to greater success in more traditional career paths as well. I strive to empower them to know that where they live now is a stepping stone to get them to where they want to be tomorrow. That being said, I'm so excited to welcome you to my classroom today, composed primarily of sophomores. My students and I have been working on a collaborative project with some of our theater students and our resident theater teacher. The project calls for students to write original songs, monologues, and poems that share some of their personal experience in the COVID-19 pandemic. The finished product will be an original song cycle written and composed by the students. We've titled this as Pieces from the Pandemic. In today's lesson, you will see the students approaching the culmination of the project. They will collaborate to create assessment criteria, review the analysis of the master text, The Vagabond, with text by Robert Louis Stevenson and music by Rafe Vaughn Williams. Finally, they will break into groups to where they will perform for one another and use the rubric that they were all a part of creating in order to give one another feedback. They will look for usage of various literary and musical devices in the students' original compositions and offer each other glows and grows on their theatrical performance. Lastly, they will propose and discuss questions that challenge each other to consider the interpretation of the audience as well as the intention of the creating artist. Fundamentally, the students' accomplishments in this project are the result of layer upon layer of scaffolded learning in the areas of music theory, vocal technique, composition, theatrical performance, creative writing, and literary analysis. Within the Performing Arts Program at Chalmette High, part of our mission is to build well-rounded, literate, intellectual performers. The video will provide a glimpse of this while also providing a peek into a classroom that resonates as a safe space where student performances and the creative process can thrive and take place in an inspired, authentic way, creating rigorous academic growth. They have weathered many different types of storms through this quarantine experience. The students' walks have been unique, but one of the goals in doing this project is the hope that students will see that though each person's walk has been different, we are all united and surrounded by many others taking the same kind of journey. It is a project that not only challenges students to perform continually at the highest levels of analysis, synthesis, evaluation, and creation, but also while doing so, they strive to find a sense of community again, to create connection in a time of distance, Students need this camaraderie and catharsis to further move toward that sense of hope and community. What were some of the things we took away from our analysis of this text when we looked at the text alone? Lily. That it was sort of a theme of seasons. Very good. A theme of seasons. Can anyone add on to that? Montana. Like the seasons represent growing in a way, either through life or through a certain situation as he walks on a certain path that he's on. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Abigail, was that the only interpretation that we talked about? Um, no. So we also talked about the fact that um, this could be growth over a short period of time or over a longer period of time. Um, and that it could have been you know, an emotional release, or it might have been um, just like kind of feelings just holding together. So there could have been so many different interpretations of it, but we really um, centered in on the idea that it's about growth over time and how like the journey got there. Beautiful, I love it. All about the journey. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, oh yes, Lily. Um, Catherine pointed out last time how it was more of losing a friend or like family member so he's like he wants 
He's asking for the heaven above because that's where his friend is. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I love that you brought up what Catherine said. Catherine, it was wonderful words. Yes, indeed. That, that's another way that we can interpret this, that potentially there was the loss of a friend. We're not sure, but we see those different interpretations here. When we went into the next level of adding the accompaniment, the musical setting for the vagabond, did we get any additional, any additional information, Melody? So that is kind of what I meant when I said like accompaniment should make the lyrics like make sense mm -hmm. because the accompaniment, oh, sorry, I didn't say that right. The accompaniment had like that like walking beat, and this whole song it seems this man is like just like trying to find his way through metaphorically life, but he's like, it sounds like he's literally on a path. And then there are moments where the music slows down and he's like thinking about it. He's like, where am I going? And then it goes back to like, okay, I'm walking again. Like I kind of figured it out. So it's very obvious, I guess, when the music is there to hear those um, moments. That's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Jaleel, as the bass baritone in the room who might sing The Vagabond one day, do you want to add on anything to what Melanie said? Well, yes. I feel as if she uh, she had a good point with what she was saying. It does have that kind of like continuous feel of finding out different things about himself, you know, internally. Mm. And also, to add on to what Montana said, it kind of like having to do something with the seasons and like as years pass the seasons pass so it's like over time he's changing i love that and i love that we've in our discussion we've centered in on the outward journey as well as the inward journey that could be happening yes all right so we've had a great great run of looking at other masterworks now we're going to look at your masterworks your original works all right you're already in your groups what we are going to do is take some time for you to perform for one another and analyze each other's work as well as give feedback. All right? There we go. <laughs> Everybody is so funny. So you go, darn it. That happened quickly. It was an average day. It was an average day. Nothing exciting, just an ordinary day. But isn't that how all traumatic events usually occur? No warning, they just happen. But then it all came crashing down. I feel like it was a good performance. Mm -hmm. It's very storytelling. Yes, you were a great storyteller. I could definitely tell that. I tried my best to go, to go for a more of a narrative set, um, standpoint mm -hmm. and then turn it into more of a personal experience. Like, it's because we all see. Oh. We all have our own personal experiences with the quarantine and with the pandemic and how it came on so suddenly. So it's kind of like, how do I turn that into something everyone can relate to, but also put in my own perspective in it as well. So I kind of changed up the view to a first person while also trying to keep the narrative going. Okay, I got it. So with that, I would say where you say, that's what happened to me, make it like very bold. Put a pause before it and a pause after it. Be like, that's what happened to me. And then just hold it for a second and then continue going and make it seem like there's that switch there that brings you from narrative to personal. I happen to have a little bit more background information on Zoe's piece. So Zoe, now that you've heard a little bit about the interpretation that you get from Abigail, Melanie, and Jaleel, why don't you talk about where your inspiration came from so that your group can have that contrast experience, what you took away from it versus where the inspiration came from the original composer. Please tell us. <laughs> okay, so with the entire thing, you guys are actually pretty spot on. Um, at the beginning, before quarantine had started, I had lost my grandfather. So it was like kind of this time where I was like, I had to learn how to live in a world when he had taught me to rely on everybody. And then I had to sit down and realize I have to do this by myself now, like he's not here anymore. So it was kind of just this time where I was like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to, like, how am I supposed to do this? Um, and so I kind of needed a break. I felt like when it comes to me, I can't like 
express emotions in public like that's not something I like to do and so I was kind of just keeping it all to myself and with that comes a lot of thoughts which is where the I'm drowning in a dark room came from because it was just a bunch of thoughts over and over again and I couldn't like express to anybody how I was really feeling because everybody else around me was feeling it and I didn't want to be like that extra burden or whatever so I actually started writing this at that point and didn't know when like what I wanted to go through with it and I couldn't figure out what I actually wanted and then we got word around that quarantine was happening and I was like oh this could be my time like I don't have to worry about school I don't have to worry about the people around me I can focus on myself and my mental health and like push forward and I can dig myself out of this hole so that's kind of where I was going with the positive thing like he was always a person who wanted to look on the bright side and everything happened for a reason so when quarantine started I was able to take that and you brought up like this project and I was like oh I can actually go with the direction that he was so set on doing with everybody's life yeah so yeah well I'm able I'm I'm glad you were able to like actually like because I'm not super into like just telling people how I feel either like I do it through writing songs right. and I'm glad you were able to like find that because it's it's so hard to just be like hey I'm sad let's talk about it like no yeah. no put me in front of a piano and then we'll talk you know what I mean right. like yeah. that's that's how it is exactly. so to conclude this part of today's class why don't we share just a couple of aha moments that you had beautiful kind of things that you recognize or really helpful feedback that you got from someone in your group Jaleel um, to go off of, of Zoe's piece, I like how she kind of just basically exposed how much songwriting and music can help a person as she talked about how losing her grandfather influenced her while writing her piece and how she was able to convey her emotions easier and kind of bring the more, more personal feel to her work instead of you know going off the stereotypical things it made it a little bit more personal for her and anyone else for that matter who went through that kind of phase you know during quarantine and had to deal with a loss at the same time so I just feel like um, her work made me realize just how much songwriting and things of that nature can really help someone you know, get through whatever they're, you know, going through. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Abigail. Um, again, to go off the of Zoe and Melanie's pieces, I didn't realize how much this whole entire process would really connect to everybody. Mm -hmm. Just because I know, like, when writing mine, I really went off of something that I felt. And I, you know, even throughout my song, I kind of convey that a lot of us feel alone and things like this and you know listening to those to their pieces and analyzing them you know even if it's just like the top surface that like through this we're not alone and that you know I'm going to be influenced because of both of their songs and I think that within itself is just like beautiful what a wonderful takeaway very good in this project, the students used their experience in drama, voice, music theory, literary analysis, and performance, and combined it with their theatrical training to use their emotions to reach others, to connect with others, and to help people realize that they are not alone. I think this truly has turned into not only an academically significant project, but an opportunity for our students to experience healing. Today's class and the project as a whole has provided an opportunity for students to share their experiences and make connections at a time when distance is the default. An incredible thing that you did not get to see on the video is that after our students launched their performance at school, they wrote letters to residents of a local senior living community. In these letters, they shared some of their creative work in writing since they could not go and perform for the residents. Our students are helping to connect people and build bridges in safe, meaningful ways at a time when people feel isolated. They are helping to change the tide, and I am so humbled and honored to be on the journey with them.